Name the method of separation that can most suitably be used to separate the following mixtures. Gasoline from petroleum, benzoic acid and potassium carbonate, oil from cashew nuts. So gasoline from petroleum we use fractional distillation because these are two uh, liquids with different boiling points so we use fractional distillation. Benzoic acid is a supplement it sublimes when heated therefore to separate it from potassium carbonate we use sublimation method oil from cashew nuts we use solvent extraction you should also know how to describe the experiment of a solvent extraction where you are supposed to to crush the cashew nuts and then use the solvent that process you should know it The table below shows information about three solid substances A, B, and C. Study it and answer the question that follow. Solid A, soluble in water, cold water, soluble in hot water. B, insoluble in cold water, insoluble in hot water. C, insoluble in cold water, soluble in hot water. Describe how you would separate the three solids from the mixture of the three. So how will you separate A, B, C? Place the mixture in a beaker with hot water and stir. Filter the mixture while hot to obtain B as a residue. Let the mixture containing A and C now cool. Solid C will be deposited because it is insoluble in cold water. Filter again to obtain C as a residue. Yes, evaporate the filtered to dryness to obtain solid A. Study the, di the diagram below shows a setup that can be used to prepare and collect oxygen gas. Study it and answer the question that follow. The question is, identify two mistakes from the diagram which must be corrected for one to collect the dry oxygen gas. So what are the mistakes in this experiment? Uh, this one is okay, hydrogen peroxide is okay. Now we have this, uh, this one is supposed to be a conical flask is okay. Now one mistake that is here is this uh, delivery tube this one should not be inside this concentrated solution e tube plus my kwe if you can hapa ina fa kufika hapa e i fa iku hapa ndani ina fa ifike hapa ndio hii gas ikifika hapa ndani ikitoka hapa itoke ikiwa dry ndio ingia hapa another mistake yenye imefanyika amepitisha ame dry the oxygen gas tena na ipitisha ndani ya match so it was useless drying it so the method of gas collection should not be this over water yet you want it dry so now you can either use a syringe or use another way the delivery tube in the conical flask containing concentrated sulfuric acid should not be dipped into the acid that's mistake number one which should be collected a mistake number two which will be corrected for us to correct dry oxygen for dry oxygen to be corrected it should not be collected by over water method so we should collect the method of collecting the gas so that we can collect it dry the table below shows reactions of metal a b c d and they are here that's metal a b c d reaction with acid reaction with water action on heat so this area reacts with acid to produce hydrogen no reaction with water oxide formed b no reaction no reaction metal formed hydrogen formed uh, formed oxide so this is C reacts with water and reacts with an acid. So a metal which reacts with an acid and water at the same time 
then that uh, that is the most reactive because you see the rest they don't react with water so C is the most reactive arrange the metals in order of decreasing reactivity starting with the most reactive so the most reactive is going to be C because above in a react in both water and the acid it uh, ambayo na react with with the acid with and no water that it will be the second so you in a react in acid but no water that will be the second most reactive so a is the second most reactive and then d uh, does not react with water does not react with the acid but it forms an oxide so that one makes it the second but um, this b does not react with the acid it does not react with it forms a metal remember when action of heat on nitrates those metals that forms their respective metal they are the most so what is the end of the reaction the activity series for example silver and the mercury uh, this one could be mercury or or silver so therefore uh, this one is the correct order of the activity The table below gives information of four elements by letter K, L, M, and N. Start and answer the question that for the letters do not represent the actual symbol of element. These are the elements, the electron configuration, atomic radius, ionic radius. Which two elements have similar properties? Explain. For the elements to have the similar unangalia, which go the elements with in the same group or the same period those one will give us the similarity what is the most likely formula of the oxide of l so k and m and because k is group 2 n is group 2 so this and this they share uh, similar chemical pro properties k and n they have the same number of electrons in the outermost energy level or you can say k and n because they belong to the same group what is the most likely formula of the oxide of l l is chlorine you can see so chlorine takes the the valence to nature chlorine the valence is is one so like you know in a react uh, in a chukwa seven as the valence electrons therefore it will form l two oxygen so this is two this is seven here and this is two so it's in a, in a interchange so it, it forms l2 or seven or you can write it chlorine like this which element is an animator explain so um, how do you know that the element is an animator an element which gains electrons to be stable, that one is an animator. However, L in the unit reacts by gaining one electron to be stable. Therefore, L is the animator. Any element which reacts by losing L electrons like this, this, and this, they are metals. Here, I'm going to react to cruise metals in the equestable, cruise electrons in the equestable, is a metal. Here, I'm going to react by gaining electrons in the equestable, is a non metal. L because it has seven electrons in the outermost energy level, hence react by gaining electrons. A student set up an experiment below to collect gas K. The grass wool was heated before heating the zinc. The grass wool was heated before heating the zinc powder. Why was it necessary to heat the moist grass wool, moist grass wool before heating the zinc? Powder. Why was it necessary? Uh, the reason is to, was to to enable the air that was inside here to escape. So the to expel all of the air present in the boiling tube. It will make this air which was inside here to escape. So it is to expel. What observation were made in the test tube? So remember zinc powder is gray when it is going to it is going to react with the steam now 
it will form zinc oxide so zinc powder changes from yellow uh, changes to a yellow solid when hot and white on cooling remember zinc oxide zinc oxide is white when cold and it is yellow when hot ukichoma zinc oxide eh, inakuanga white so, kwa hivyo sasa zinc yenyewe ina react na steam so the, if you ask you to write the equation the equation should be zinc plus steam steam is water in a gaseous form so it reacts to form zinc oxide plus hydrogen so gas k is hydrogen so this one when hot zinc oxide when hot is yellow hot when cold is white so the powder changes to yellow solid when hot and white on cooling using a dot and a cross represent most electrons draw the structure to show the bonding of carbon carbon four so once on a dual carbon oxide in undergo dative or covalent in undergo covalent bonding because it is a bond between a met an animator and an animator so kwanza unafaa uchua carbon iko na valence ya iko na identity ni 2 to 4 oxygen ni the electron configuration is 2 to 6 so the outermost energy level ndio was na bond now he iko na 4 he iko na 2 so they will bond like this mm. oxygen so carbon is going to be at the center ile ambayo iko moja inakuwa the center na itasungukwa na oxygen mbili so oxygen oxygen ah uh, hii oxygen iko na 1 2 3 4 5 6 electrons carbon iko na 1 2 3 4 this another oxygen has 1 2 3 4 5 6 electrons so carbon so what will happen is that Hii oxygen inatoa yake, hii inatoa yake. Hii inatoa yake mbaka finally equal stable. The same thing. So, oxygen itatoa one electron, you cancel it out. Itaweka hapa moja. Carbon itatoa yake moja. So, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, and bado ito kwa stable. Kwa hivyo, hii tena inaongeza yake moja. Hii inaongeza yake moja. Kwa hivyo, kesa hapa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, imekuwa stable so hizo zinzi zimebaki hapa 1 2 3 4 kunaziweka hapa ndani sawa so, uh, unarudi this side oxygen ya pande hii inatoa yake moja carbon inatoa moja ah uh, hii inatoa nyingine hii inatoa nyingine hizo zimebaki 1 2 3 4 unaweka hapa ndani 1 2 3 4 kwa hivyo this is the bonding sasa hii bonding haitaki uchafu Ukisha fanya hivyo, now I want you to draw this one here very clean. Uzuwai, uzuweke kadoti hata pandani because ukiweka kadoti na isabio kuwa an electron. So now, you draw it here. A very clean now. This was love work. Like this. Oxygen. Carbon. Oxygen. How many electrons here? One, two. One, two. One. one two one two and this is the correct so ukisha chafua pande una una cross and then you use this one as the correct one eh, suppose ulko meambiwa uchole ammonium ion or hydroxonium ion this one is an undergo dative. So, ukiona ikiwa positive, inamanisha there is one hydrogen here which is empty. Hapa there is one hydrogen which is empty. So, so how do you draw hydroxonium or ammonium ion? It's a simple. Ammonium ion, N itakuwa katikati. So, iyo N, nitrogen, itasungu na four hydrogens. One, two, three four hydrogen so, 
hapa lakini kati ya hizo hydrogen one is empty iko empty kabisa so ile yani iko empty wacha nichukue hii iko empty yeyote kwa hiyo ile yenye iko empty tunaiwekea positive inamaanisha ina chochote lakini hizi zingine ziko na one electron so it has one electron it has one electron it has one electron so nitrogen ni 2 to 5 so iko na 5 electrons so itatoa yake si hydrogen imetoa yake hii pia nitrogen itatoa yake moja itatoa yake moja itatoa yake moja kwa nitrogen itakuwa imebakisha ngapi itakuwa imebakisha hapa mbili so zile mbili ambazo zimebaki hapa itazipeana zote kwa hii nitrogen hydrogen ambayo iko empty so hiyo ndio inaitwa dative sasa kwa sababu this nitrogen will provide the whole two pairs to be the pair of electron to be shared because it was an ion that's on afanya hivi unaweka positive so aya kama uliko miambia uchole hydrogen ya ion you will do the same oxygen itakuwa the center imesungukwa na hydrogen 3 1 2 3 positive means kwamba hydrogen moja hapa iko empty. Ukiona tu hydrogen inamaanisha tu hydrogen are empty. So let me use this one to be empty. Nikiweka ya positive inamaanisha iko empty. Lakini hii nyingine hizi mbili siko na moja, iko na one electron. So hii oxygen iko na 2 to 6. So oxygen iko na electron 6 outside ndio inakuwa shared hapa. Kwa hivyo hydrogen hii itatoa yake moja hii itatoa yake moja nimetumia x for hydrogen like oh hii iko iko aina kitu so hii inaenda kupewa na 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 oxygen so this one ita iko moja now oxygen iko na six electrons so itapea moja hapa ipea moja huku itakuwa imebaki na four four itatoa zake mbili zote iweke hii yenye iko empty hiyo sasa ndio inaitwa dative and then itabakisha hapa mbili so kwa sababu 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 kila moja iko stable na unaweka namna hii unaweka positive utakuwa umemaliza sulfur is extracted from underground deposit by a process in which three concentric pipes are sunk down into into the deposit as shown below So this is the diagram. Name the process the process represented above. This one is the fresh process. What is passed through down pipe J? So pipe J is this one the innermost. Ni nini inawekwa kwa innermost? Hii ni outermost. Alafu kuna hii yenye inatoa. So hapa the EJ what enters here is the hot compressed air at 15 atmospheres the process is the fresh process uh, you should know if this is the compressed air the superheated water gets from this the outermost in the superheated water ndio inaingia na ujue function of superheated is, is to melt the, the sulfur So because this water is at a very high temperature and then this the inner this inner here is the one that will bring out the molten sulfur name two allotopes of sulfur we have rhombic you can call it prismatic or you can call it beta we have another one monoclinic or octahedral or alpha you can choose any one name Name the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in graphite. It is the dichromic electrons. In a solution, it is the mobile ions that are responsible. Study the diagram to answer the question that for. This is carbon 4. This is charcoal. Gas Z. Identify gas Z. So carbon 4 when it passes through charcoal, charcoal is a reducing agent. So it will reduce carbon 4 to carbon 2. Gas Z is CO. So gas Z is carbon 2 oxide. Write the chemical equation for the reaction. It is carbon 4 plus carbon which is which is a reducing agent. It reduces carbon 4 to carbon 2. State why the above experiment should be carried out in a fume chamber because carbon 2 is very poisonous. Two 
25 cm cube of 0.12 molar potassium hydroxide solution required 30 cm cube of solution of diabetic acid. This for complete neutralization. The acid containing contained 3.15 grams per 500 cm cube. Calculated, calculated the morality of the acid. So the morality of the acid. So first let us write the equation. So potassium hydroxide will react with the acid. This is like a sulfuric acid. So H2, H, when you may pair it, and so it is going to form potassium. If it was sulfate, it is going to form potassium sulfate, but it is that the sulfate is represented by H plus water. So, so this K is two, so we have to put two here to balance, two here to balance. But we know this is the volume here is 25 centimeters cube. We know the morality is 0 0.12 capital M. So we can get the number of moles of the hydroxide. Uh, we know that 20, uh, 1000 centimeters cube of potassium hydroxide is equal in 0 0.12 moles because morality is in 1000. What about 25 centimeters cube? It had to pair how many moles? So it upon 25 times 0 0.12 divided by 1000, it had to pair 0. Point, uh, 0, 0, 0.003 moles. Whatever moles here, potassium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. So, because above the ratio is 2 to 1, now the moles of the acid is going to be half. Moles of the acid equal to 0. 0 0.003 times 1 over 2, which is equal to 0. 0.0015 moles. Yeah, because above the mole ratio is 1 to 2, mole size acid is a half. But to me, the morality of the acid, the volume of the acid is equal to 30. So the, this mole is in 30. What about 1000? Because morality should be in 1000. So 30 centimeters cube is to pair. 0 0.0015 moles. A thousand centimeters cube would be what? Morality is the number of moles in a liter, 1000. So it is 1000 times 0 0.0015 divided by 30. And this one gives us 0 0.05 capital M morality. The next question is. Calculate the relative formula of the acid. The relative formula of the acid. The relative formula of the acid. You remember the question, the formula I usually give. Uh, morality equal to mass in grams per liter over RFM. So now we want to calculate the RFM. We have the morality of the acid. Mass in grams per liter, we will have it from here because we have mass in grams in 500. So in a liter, it is going to be twice this. 500 in here, what about a thousand? It acquired twice this. So we already have mass in grams per liter. So we will say 3.15 grams is in 500. A thousand centimeters cube, it acquired a copy. It a hundred. A thousand times 3.15. Divided by 500 in so it acquires 6.3 grams per liter. This is the mass in grams per liter of the acid. Morality is the So we have RFM. So RFM is equal to mass in grams per liter divided by morality. So mass in grams per liter is 6.3 divided by morality is 0 0.05. And this one will give us 126. And that is the RFM. Explain how a sample of ethanol could be distinguished from a sample of ethanoic acid by a chemical test. How would you differentiate ethanol and ethanoic acid? An alcohol and an alkanoic acid. 
put ethanol in a test tube and also ethanoic acid in another test tube. Add the sodium carbonate to each of the test tube and note the observation. In the test tube with ethanoic acid, allowed effervescence is observed. Yeah, bubbles are formed and a colorless gas is produced. Allowed effervescence is observed while there is no effervescence in the test tube containing ethanol. So there will be effervescence in a test tube containing ethanoic acid when sodium carbonate is added. But there will be no effervescence when the sodium carbonate is added to a test tube containing ethanol. That's how you would differentiate that this one is ethanol and this one is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid will produce effervescence, but ethanoic acid will produce effervescence. Ethanol will not produce effervescence. The flow chart below shows a question. This is ammonia, copper to oxide, gas A, liquid B. State the observation made when ammonia gas is passed through overheated copper to oxide. Copper to oxide, you should know the color. It is black. Copper is brown. It is important to know these colors because when you are taught to make observation, you tell us the color changed from where to where, from which to which. So, ammonia gas is a reducing agent, so it will reduce copper to oxide to copper. So, solid B is going to be the brown copper, and it is going to form a colorless liquid, a gas. State observation. So the black solid copper to oxide changes to brown. So, so the color changes from black to brown. That is the black copper to oxide is reduced to copper which is brown. So this is the equation which you should know. Lazima ujo kwandika equation. So ammonia plus copper to oxide it forms copper which is brown nitrogen gas and a colorless liquid that is water so gas a is nitrogen liquid b is water and this is the equation you may be asked next write the equation that took place starting with calcium carbonate describe how a solid sample of calcium sulfate can be prepared into a beaker containing dilute nitric acid, add calcium carbonate a little by a time, a little by a little, as you stir. Continue adding until there is no further reaction. Filter the mixture, add sodium sulfate to the filter. Filter the mixture. Filter the mixture. The residue is calcium sulfate. Wash the residue with distilled water and dry it between filter papers. Gas G is prepared in a laboratory by adding concentrated sulfuric acid to a compound C. Gas G is denser than air and it dissolves in water to form a solution which is strongly acidic. Name two gases that are likely to be G. Two gases that are likely to be G is hydrogen chloride gas or sulfur for oxide gas SO2 or HCl gas. Kwa sababu, HCl inakuwa formed when conch sulfuric acid in a react na lox rock salt rock salt ni sodium chloride so sodium chloride with conch sulfuric acid you get hydrogen chloride sulfur oxide is formed when conch sulfuric acid react with copper metal it forms so here the solid that will react so c for this one is copper with conch sulfuric acid you get sulfur for oxide these two gases are denser than air they are collected by which method downward delivery method Draw the diagram to show how gas G is collected. It is by downward delivery because it is denser than air. Equal volumes of diabetes cakes 
were each reacted with excess zinc carbonate powder. Then table below shows the volumes of gas produced. Gas X gas Y. X is to 20 centimeters Y katoa. So it means this one is more, the acid is more reactive than this one. So acid Y is stronger than this one. The man is katoa volume kubo. Identify gas produced. When a carbonate react with a, an acid, it brings out or it produces carbon for oxide gas. Explain the difference in the volume of the gas produced. Acid Y is stronger than acid X. It produces more hydrogen ions which react with zinc carbonate, hence producing more carbon four oxide. Methane gas react with chlorine gas as shown. This is the equation. UV light is required. Use the bond energy in the table below to calculate the enthalpy of for the above reaction. So kitu ya kwanza unafanya, open this equation like this, open this equation like this, open this one like this, and this like that. The bond for carbon hydrogen, carbon hydrogen ni 413. Like in 413 is ikonga 1, 2, 3, 4. So ni 4 times 413 plus. Chlorine, chlorine in 346 plus 3, 2. Chlorine, chlorine in 242. 242. So, kiongeza ina kupea 184094. The same here. Hydrogen, carbon, there are three of them, three. Chlorine, carbon, carbon, chlorine is one. And then HCl, HCl with four, that one, so you add. But remember, this is called bond breaking, and this is bond formation. Bond breaking is endo, endothermic, so that's why it is a positive. Uh, bond formation is exothermic. So if it is exothermic, then it is negative. So to, get, to calculate now the energy that was used there, the change in energy, the change in energy is equal bond breaking energy plus bond formation energy. So the bond breaking is positive 1894 plus negative 2016. So negative times are positive is negative. 19, 9, 1894 minus 2016 it gives you negative 122 kilojoules per mole. An equilibrium exists between chromate ion and dichromate ions as shown below. This and that. So this is yellow and this is orange. State and explain the observation made on adding aqueous potassium hydroxide solution to the equilibrium mixture. So if you add more hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide, it will provide more hydroxide ions. So, so what will hydroxide ions do? It will react with, um, with hydrogen to form water. So more water is going to be formed, meaning the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. So more of the yellow color will be observed. The solution changes from orange to yellow. Potassium hydroxide produces hydroxide ions, which remove hydrogen ions in the form of water, making equilibrium to shift to the left. Equilibrium will shift to left in a to right in left so equilibrium will shift to the right because of that below is a table of direction potential it doesn't hmm. select the species the species with the largest oxidizing power largest oxidizing power is the most positive so the most on angalia is is science the most positive is the strongest oxidizing power the most negative is the strongest reducing power or agent. You can call it reducing agent and it has a more reducing power. So, oxidizing power, you can take D. I'm on a equation here. Reducing power, ni A, as a solid. I take it as a solid or you can write this up to here. Calculate the electron potential, EMF of the cell 
constructed using a half of cell AB. So we are joining A and B to form a electrochemical cell. Kwanza lazima ujue kati ya hizi mbili ni gani itandago a uh, reduction ni gani itandago kwa hivyo negative 2.8 negative 1.5 this is more positive the one that is more positive it is the one that will give electrons and it will undergo oxidation the one with less e uh, reduction potential will undergo reduction now we use the formula E cell is equal to E theta of reduction minus E theta of oxidation. Kwa hivyo hapa, ili utumie formula, lazima ujue ni gani ili andago oxidation, ni gani ili andago reduction. Therefore, yenye ili andago reduction, ni tumesema ni ili andago reduction, ili andago oxidation. So, now we use the formula. E theta reduction minus E theta. Now, that is negative 1.5 minus minus 2.8 which is minus 1.5 plus 2.8 and the answer is positive 1.3 volts a polymer has the following structure this is a polymer a sample of this polymer is found to have a molecular mass of 5194 determine the number of monomers of the polymer for you to get the Number of first we have to get a monomer from this polymer. If you put a monomer kwa hii polymer, unaangalia the repeating unit. Ni gani ile na jirudia rudia? Kwa hivyo CH2, CH, CN, CH2, CN. Kwa hivyo unaona kwanza hapa hii ndio ina jirudia. Sawa? Si hii ndio hii ndio hii. Kwa hivyo this is the the monomer. Remember the monomer now is going to be written as CH2 double bond ch and this is now the monomer this is the repeating unit so we have one monomer so for us to get the number of monomers we get the uh, relative form the molecular mass of this how do you do that utakuwa umepewa carbon is 12 hydrogen is 1 nitrogen is 14 so unaweka carbon hapa siku 2 12 times 3 siko 3 1 2 3 3 hydrogen is 1 2 3 1 times 3 Nitrogen iko moja, 14. So, itakupea toto ya 15. So, 15 over 53 times N, number of monomers that we don't know, will give us uh, this total, which is 5194. So, you divide by 50 both sides, and you get 98 as the number of monomers. The diagram below shows the behavior of a radiation from a radioactive material in an electric field. Study it and answer the question that follow. This is the diagram. Plate A, plate B, P, Q, R. Identify the radiation PR. Identify the charge of plate A, plate B. Hapa unafaa ujue tukuna three particles inakuwa tunakuanga na alpha, tukuna peta, na tukuna gamma inakuwa produced. But tunataka kujua, ukiangalia diffraction to the plate, the, the diffraction here is very big, the diffraction here is small. So, if the diffraction is small, unajua hiyo ni alpha particle. Alpha particle is heavier, kwa hivyo diffraction inakuwa kidogo. Kwa hivyo definitely unajua hii ni alpha. Alpha particle is uh, positively charged. If it is positively charged, in a imekuwa attracted towards this plate, in a manisa plate is negative. So, kwa sababu alpha is positive, itakuwa deflected towards the negative. It means now R is the pet, R, it means in alpha, this one is beta, and it is negatively charged, so this one is positive. So that's how unachambua hiyo story. So ni vizuri ujue the properties and the characteristics of these particles, the alpha. Kama tunajua mm, gamma has no charge. Ndiyo mani naenda straight. It doesn't have the charge. So ni vizuri kuelewa the properties, characteristics 
of these particles produced radioactivity topic. Alpha particle, beta particle, and the negative. So these are the characteristics of the MSM. Alpha particle na faku juwe the heavier. Kwa hivu, during diffraction, inakuwa deflected a small distance. Uh, beta they are lighter, therefore inakuwa deflected towards a long a large distance. The angle is big. And then, beta they are negative. If they are negative, lazima ikuwa attracted to the positive. Describe how pure sodium chloride can be obtained from a mixture of iodine, sodium chloride, and sand. Remember, iodine is a supplement. Kitu ya kwanzo nafaa kujua ni hiyo. Heat the mixture in a beaker. Iodine sublimes leaving sand and the sodium chloride. Add water to the mixture in the beaker. Stir then filter. Evaporate the filtrate to saturation. Allow the solution to cool to form crystals of sodium chloride. And you are done. Name two cations making water hard. It is magnesium ion and the calcium ion that are responsible for that. By use of ionic equation, show the sodium carbonate, how sodium carbonate makes permanent water soft. Remember, sodium carbonate is to remove the magnesium ions. So the carbonate will react with the magnesium ion. So this is the ionic equation for removing magnesium or calcium. Uh, this is the table. What do you not deduce about the nature of solution R? Solution R has a pH of 1, then it is a strongly acidic. So which solution would react most vigorously with sodium hydrogen carbonate? That should must be an acid R, solution R. Which solution is likely to be ammonia solution? Ammonia solution is a weak base. So a weak base here is T. Define the term solubility. Solubility is the maximum mass of a solute that is required to circulate 100 grams of, a, of water, if that is what the solvent used, 100 grams of water at a particular temperature. Give two uses of solubility curves, fractional crystallization, used to obtain a pure sample from a mixture of two soluble solutes in a solution. Describe a suitable test for sulfite. How do you, how can you test for sulfite ions? Add barium nitrate. You can use barium nitrate, barium chloride, or lead to nitrate solution into a test tube containing the sulfate ions, followed by dilute nitric acid or HCl. If a white PPT is formed, which dissolves in the acid, then the sulfate ions, the sulfite ions are present. This one is called the sulfite. Sulfate is SO42 minus. This one is sulfate. Sulfate ions. This one are called, if it is three, it is sulfite. Here, here. 